was it like when Eric brought the idea of fire to you? Because I believe he's the one who raised the topic. Because there's certainly, it's a non-traditional path. There's certainly risk in there. Uh, and there's a spectrum of risk depending upon how you manage it. But how did that resonate with you? What was your reaction like? And how did you get on board? Uh, when he initially started talking about it, I was just like, oh, hmm. <laughs> That's Ignore. Cool. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he was sort of like sending me information. And I had a lot of questions about the reality of whether or not that would actually work. Uh, because, you know, I think you sort of move along and you, you make, you're completely, you've bought into the idea that you're going to work until you're 65. And, you know, I was, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't feel like I was in a position where I was raking in huge amounts of money. Uh, and so I thought, well, that's for people who have a lot of money to do. That's not for like regular people like us to do. Uh, and so I didn't, I wasn't really paying attention to some of the things he was telling me, to be honest. And <laughs> I'm sure that was kind of frustrating for him. Um, but His then, feelings are very hurt. You can see it right now. Yeah. But I, I don't... Well, what, one thing that happened was when COVID hit, I was take I you know I was working from home and it was pretty stressful to be trying trying to run my lab remotely, and I was taking a lot of walks in the middle of the day to deal, and I was listening to audiobooks and Eric had shared with me how to quit like a millionaire, as well mm. as a couple of the sort of foundation episodes of um, the Choose Fi podcast. So I ended up listening. I think first it was the Choose Fi podcast. And I think he was one he pushed to me, like, just listen to this 4% rule. Uh, because he was trying to explain how that would work. And I wasn't really buying it. And so I listened to that and started <laughs> thinking about it more. And then I listened to um, how to quit like a millionaire. And it's, and then we sat down and started going through the numbers. And I saw the numbers working. At the same time, I think we had like amounts of money that we we're accumulating all of a sudden. Uh, and so we paid off our mortgage, which felt amazing. Coming from a place where, you know, my, I grew up in an apartment, we never owned a house. You know, it was like just being able to yeah. build our house and, you know, was a huge accomplishment for me. And I never dreamed we'd have this awesome little house in the woods in Maine. And so being able to pay that off when we did was just, and paying off student loans too. But then, you know, after that, you're thinking about saving for your kids college. And so we really were thinking, and Eric before me, thinking more about like, okay, how do we move beyond just our pre-tax savings that we do anyway, like through our right. employers? Uh, and, you know, what does this timeline really look like? Because eventually you are going to retire, right? And, and when you start thinking about what's the earliest we could do it, I was pretty shocked to see how we could move that up. This is the way it works. Like I present the idea to her like 4,000 times. She ignores it, decides one time that like, uh, she's going to listen to this podcast where there's all this data and numbers. <laughs> like she's totally data driven and like no amount That's of how data, we're trained. No amount of data that I present is going to convince her. Oh, she has I to see. find it herself. So yeah, that's how it worked. So Laura had, she needed a lot of convincing, like number wise, like I, I had the idea about fire. I have to onboard her for you. Was it, I mean, was it the same? Do you, I feel like you're less involved in the numbers just based on what Jason has told me. Um, is it more a kind of like a conceptual idea of like, do we need to be running this rat race all the time? Or like how important is career? How important is like balancing hobbies in life? I feel like you're someone who's like, you're sampling all these different things. So like maybe fire wasn't the term you used, but it seems like, like it was pretty easy to onboard you into the concept. Is that true? Definitely. Um, yeah. Like I was saying earlier, I, I realized pretty early on in my career that I didn't want sort of a traditional, uh, day job. I needed change. I needed something more exciting. And then, uh, when my daughter was young, Jason started traveling a lot for work. I mean, it was probably 75% of the time. And yeah, for a few years there. Yeah. So, uh, that also kind of, kind of helped me realize that, you know, it would be nice if we could find some way to work it out where he was available more, um, for, myself and for my daughter and just to, you know, I honestly just missed having them around. Yeah. And if there was some way to, that we could tweak what we were doing to make that work, you know, and I'm, 
Yeah, so we started those discussions pretty early on um, about finding a way to retire early. Um, I wasn't aware of the FIRE movement or how any of that worked, um, but I'm a pretty low-key person, and I said to Jason, you know, I, I think I would be happy living on a beach in St. Lucia, you know, selling fish out of a hut. You know, I don't, I don't have a lot of requirements. Yeah, you did. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, it's, it's nice to be comfortable, but honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I can pretty much live just about anywhere. And so, um, yeah. And then I think that's kind of when Jason sort of took it and ran, you know, that idea and started doing the research. How do you set a number if like she just says, I'm happy living anywhere. Like I could, you know, I could live on the, on, on a beach in St. Lucia and sell fish. Like how do you, how do you choose a number? Yeah. For yourself? Cause yeah, I mean, if but you're seriously. talking like 15 years ago, it was like this, it was finger to the wind. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It was not a good enough number. And yeah. it was probably, to be honest with you, a third of where we ended up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And once we started to learn and once the resources got better, you know, whether it's podcasts or books yeah. and frankly, just awareness, we yes, then we improved our process and uh, yeah, you know, mean, we still updated our number a number of times, just as I know you have. But yeah, well, honestly, in the beginning, I think it was more like we were picturing ourselves like super lean fire. Like it yeah. would be like a you know it would be a super lean fire situation. Like we we didn't think that we could live the way we're living now. Retired. I don't yeah. know. It was like Mr. Money. Yeah, am I correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah, more to, more towards that end of things, yeah. and uh, I think a combination Which of I was not cool with. just <laughs> no, no, and but I mean, you know, our, our thought process was different early on, and you know, I started to make opportunistic moves at work mm-hmm. and try to level up my career, and that enabled us to think differently and, mm-hmm. frankly, save differently. Yeah, that's and, one of the reasons yeah. that we moved out to California because we realized, okay, if we kind of up our game, and if we're, and since we're both willing to make those moves while we're young, you know, across the country, then we can make a big difference in our saving.